What's good everyone, it's MJO23Dan back with another video and today's video I have something special. You guys know that I've been a proponent, a champion of this sneaker and I've talked about it for a very very long time. Just a little backstory: in 2012 I was an administrator on the Soul Collector forums and I've always been curious about what Michael Jordan was wearing on feet as a rookie. He signed his first contract on October 26, 1984, and he was wearing one specific shoe. But before then, I wanted to ask the audience on the forums about this particular shoe. And we all know that October 18 is supposedly the day of the ban. So we're dating back into the NBA preseason, 1984-85, and Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were playing seven preseason games. So Jordan is wearing this shoe all throughout the preseason. It's a black and red shoe called the Airship, and he somehow managed to go through six games of the seven games and wear this black and red Airship. So the Bulls are playing the New York Knicks at Madison Square Garden on October 18th. The NBA had strict rules about uniformity of uniform rules and a lot of the shoes out there had to be predominantly white. With Jordan wearing a black and red silhouette, it wasn't allowed. So I posed the question in the forums. I said, find me an NBA game of where Michael Jordan is wearing the black and red Air Jordan 1. Everyone is pointing over to the 1985 slam dunk competition where Michael Jordan is wearing the black and red Air Jordan 1. But that was not seen until February of 1985. Actually, Michael Jordan would debut the Air Jordan 1 in November of 1984, and he'd switch off between the Airship, a white and red Airship, and the Air Jordan 1 in the Chicago colorway between November and December and wear the Air Jordan 1 for the rest of his rookie season. So I always thought it was really crazy that the brand was ignoring the airship and people were buying into the band story saying that every time Michael Jordan wore the black and red Air Jordan 1s that he'd be fined $5,000 per game and Nike would pay the fines. That wasn't the case. So I wanted to prove everyone wrong. And at the same time, I was just really curious to see like if anyone can actually find a picture of Michael Jordan wearing these black and red shoes. So that's 2012. We fast forward to 2014 and it's the 30th anniversary of this supposed band. And Jordan Brand puts out a tweet of Michael Jordan wearing the airship, the white and red airship with a quote. And you guys can see this right here. Thinking about all this, I'm still working for Soul Collector at the time and my mind is blown because this is the first time that Jordan Brand or Nike had ever acknowledged the airship. And it got the wheels turning. It kind of had me thinking that, yo, maybe someday this might happen. Maybe someday that the airship will release. Who knows? So fast forward. 2015, 2016, we finally get a Band Air Jordan 1. And it's real nice, the leather is great, but it's not the Airship. I said, screw it, if we're gonna try and get this shoe and you know, really be serious about this, 2016 was the time that I had made this petition on change.org. And it was my petition for Nike to retro the Airship. And then, fast forward, to 2018 and we get this documentary called Unbanned and of course we talk about the airship the story of the band what happened what have you and it's all up in the air it's in Nike's court Jordan Brand's court it's up to you guys if you guys want to continue to acknowledge what had actually happened after this documentary came out so, you know, over the course of these past seven years, I think it's just accumulated and just like steamrolled into something great. So without further ado, I was gifted by Jordan Brand a package. So this, my friends, is the New Beginnings pack. And it is the 1984 Airship PE and the white and red Air Jordan 1 from 1985. So I want to get into everything about this pack, the story, 
and all the details coming up. guys so this is the new beginnings pack from Jordan brand and Nike so on this side we have the 1984 airship PE on this side we have the white and red 1985 Air Jordan 1 and there is no price tag but it is rumored to release for $350 in February of 2020 this is the Jordan new beginnings pack style number is CT6252 and color code is 900. Okay, so opening up the box, just like the Converse pack and also the DMP pack, same type of thing. You get two sides and we have 1984 and 1985. 1984 for the Airship and 1985 for the Air Jordan 1. All right, so on the Airship side, we have the graph paper and when you open it up, you get the white tissue paper and then you get the airship all right so this is the airship manual you'll notice that it is in red and this side of the box is in blue so they'd actually inverted the colors whereas this was the color of the box and this was the color of the manual so in the manual we get this color right here and this is the airship pe so when you open up the manual you just get a brief history of the nike airship what it's all about what type of uh, tech is in it and everything like that just really cool details there's a look at the airship and I believe it is pretty much identical to the original And we're going to move on to the Air Jordan 1 so that the tissue paper, you have the Jumpman, Jordan's number in 23, and the Wings logo. Open that up, you get the white tissue paper, and then you get the Air Jordan 1. So let's go ahead and take this out and then take off the box. Alright guys, so here is the Airship. This is the one. This is the one that we all really wanted to get retroed. We're out, I mean, I wanted to get retroed. And I feel like the goal has been completed. Nike has officially recreated the Nike Airship in retro form. So this was, as stated on the box, a PE, a player exclusive, a shoe that Michael Jordan wore in 1984. And so Nike's version has really soft leather. I think you guys will be really surprised of the quality of this type of shoe. And in a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and compare this one to Minute Maid Poppy's version of his airship. But this one, again, has the nice soft leather. You got the big fat swoosh right on the side, and then you got the red collar. On the back, you have Nike Air branding with the Nike italicized and the Air capitalized. Coming around to the middle side of the shoe, just like its counterpart on the lateral. Something real cool here is that these flaps actually come apart and away from the shoe. So it's pretty much got like that off-white vibe if you can feel that. So if you were to stylize this shoe, you can put the laces through or you know have the flaps come apart. You got a nice red lining, nylon red ni lining, and then a nylon tongue with Nike Air up top. And then Another cool feature is the size on the lining on the inside. And then we have the outsole. So different from the traditional Air Jordan 1 outsole, 
is this little piece right here. So it looks pretty much just like the Air Jordan 1. It's got the, what they called back in the 80s, the air wedge system, where it is uh, air encapsulated in the heel. But they changed that into different wording and they all now call it the air sole technology. So that's that. All right, so coming onto the insole of the shoe, you'll see it's a white insole, red Nike Air. And then this size sticker that's on the inside. So this is actually inspired by another friend of ours, Channel Chris, Chris Arnold on Instagram. And he had this sticker on the inside of his PE version of the black toe in the Air Jordan 1. And when I pull out the insole for the Air Jordan 1, you'll see a lot of similarities. Actually, a lot of similarities. So, you know, again, these shoes were made in Korea back in the day. And so, you know, a lot of the shoes predominantly now are made in China. But it's just some of the little, you know, details that were included with the shoe, and I thought it was great. So the actual insole itself is a very thick piece of foam. Really an untraditional look inside your Nike and Jordan shoes. It's very thick and it's very, like, plush. And I think it's something that you guys will really enjoy as far as step and comfort when you guys put these on feet. The airship also includes a red pair of laces, so if you guys weren't feeling the white ones, you can go ahead and throw the red ones in there. And then one pretty interesting detail in here when I was taking out the insole, the shoe is actually board lasted. Not like your typical soft strobe last where you know you can see a lot of it uh, built in with regular type shoes or sock like shoes, any of the knits and stuff like that. So back in the day in the 80s, Nike was actually board lasting their uh, Air Jordans up until I want to say the Air Jordan 8. The reason behind them doing this is because they wanted to build a stiffer shoe, something that would actually last on court. Typically you would see board lasted shoes in say like mountain climbing or rigorous activities, sports, you name it. Whereas like in recent pairs, you know, you won't be seeing any type of board lasting in there. So it's pretty interesting to see that the brand actually uh, reconsidered you know, putting that detail in there. And this is actually the same in the Air Jordan 1 in which I'll show you as well. But yeah, a uh, long time coming. This is the Nike Airship, the official Nike Airship. Let's go ahead and we're going to compare this to Ray Henderson's pair. All right, so Ray's pair, it's uh, pretty close. Like I would say, just with color differences alone, the size of the swoosh, and probably like a little bit here and there, the cuts of the material, I would say it's pretty close. So both of these attempts actually were recreations. Again, this shoe that Nike created was pretty much inspired by Michael Jordan's early adopted shoe before the Air Jordan 1. And we saw a lot of pictures up close about this shoe from the ball boy that sent this pair to SCP auctions back a couple years ago. And so that was pretty much the model that both Nike and Ray were using to try and recreate the airship. So you can see in Nike's pair, the swoosh is much bigger than Ray's pair. Also the color, Ray used a darker red and Nike used a university red. There were also these two holes for ventilation on Ray's pair that is not present on Nike's pair. He also used a Air Jordan 1 outsole. So you'll see that it is different from the airship. And of course, that being so is because donors are not available in this type of outsole where it has that little area right here. And I believe that this little area right here was fine tuned, you know, later as the Air Jordan 1 was getting recreated. I'm not sure if it's more of an aesthetic thing or it's more of a performance thing. I want to lean more towards the performance aspect of things. But again, like Nike is always m messing with the tooling just to, you know, fine tune it to get it right for Jordan. So then we go down to the toes here. And you can see like the preparations are pretty much identical other than the shape of the shoe. So you'll see this is more of an elongated area that Ray used versus Nike's version is shorter. Also right here toward the vamp, you'll see that this longer stitch line on Ray's pair versus the shorter stitch area for Nike. 
Again, also Ray had tried to recreate the flap system. And then Nike did the same thing. You can see it's, it's pretty close. And then the Nike Air is on the back. You can see that Ray's pair is more italicized than Nike's version. And also the strip of leather that goes down from that top part of the collar all the way down to the sole, Ray used a thicker cut of leather versus Nike's version, used a skinnier version of leather. Up top, we have the lining. So Ray used memory foam right into the lining with lambskin and he also used a leather tongue, whereas Nike's version used their traditional nylon tongue and that cloth or nylon feel of the lining. And that's it. That is a recreation of the Nike Airship from Minute Maid Poppy, Ray Henderson, and Nike. Let's move on to the Air Jordan 1. All right, so the Air Jordan 1. This is called the New Beginnings, and this is the newer cut that Jordan Brand is going to be doing for 2020. And so this is a shoe that Michael Jordan actually wore in a game or two in his rookie season. And a lot of people don't understand this, but Jordan actually wore more of a mid-cut shoe than these retail versions of highs. So if you look at auctions, you'll see that some of the pairs that Michael Jordan wore that are listed are actually lower cut. It's also got a fatter swoosh on the side. But honestly, this is pretty much a correct version of the swoosh that you'll see in like 85 retail pairs. And I'll compare that in a second. But most importantly, the shape of the shoe overall, it's different from your traditional retro Air Jordan 1. So as we know, retro Air Jordan 1s are gonna be going up from 160 to 170 starting next year. The new beginnings are gonna be going up to 190. And then mids, I wanna say what, 135, 140-ish? I'm not sure around that area. But I think you guys will really enjoy the new beginnings. So hopefully we see more of the classic OG colorways in this shape. But, you know, just going all over the shoe. On the left shoe, it actually has another pair of laces in white. As far as the shoe and its original details, you have the classic Jordan hang tag. So it's pretty identical to the original where you see Jordan in that landscape, the wings logo to the side, him and his black toes. Hopefully we get those with the black tongue sometime down the line. Then you open it up and how I was saying with the air wedge system, they actually use the Nike air sole system. Of, of all the text that is on the inside of this card, that's the only difference. Everything else with the text and everything is the same. And then that is the back. It just has a Nike branding in the corner there. So here is the right shoe, all laced up. Nike Air branding on the tongue. It's a nylon tongue. And they went back to adding the dates and the specific production right on the side, just like the OGs. So the date in there is actually, well, first off, it's the size to begin. And then the date in there is 191027XC. So that is actually the born date of the shoe right when it came off the line. So that is pretty much what that means. So this shoe was recreated at that date. Outsole on the bottom, your traditional Air Jordan 1 outsole. And then the color of the shoe is actually Varsity Red. So across all different Jordan models, you'll get a different version of Varsity Red. It's not going to be the same temperature, I would say of other university or varsity red shoes. But nonetheless, this is the one for the new beginnings. So let me go ahead and pull out the insole so you guys can check that out. So here is the insole for the new beginnings Air Jordan 1. Again, just like the Airship, thicker insole, white Nike Air in its counterpart color of the shoe. And then the sticker that is included in there, you'll see and the date actually matches closely to what Channel Chris shared with his shoe. All right, so here is the original Air Jordan 1 from 1985. Was able to pick this up some years ago, probably in the 600s range. Nicely used. It's hard to find shoes these days in dead stock condition. 
but you know something with a used shoe is is, is is something to appreciate so pretty good colors here still all in its original flavors and everything so let's go ahead and match that up with the original so I have the right shoe of the OG 85 and then the left shoe of the new beginnings you can see how the heights are pretty much the same the straight back of that shoe the swoosh is pretty much the same the only difference I could really see with both shoes is this area right here of the collar so this space right here in the new beginnings is actually a lot bigger than it is in the Chicago's and then they didn't use any foam because these are actually just painted over foam pieces so that's why you see chipping in it and everything like that whereas in the new beginnings you'll see leather in replace placement but the, they also did the wings logo totally embossed uh, traditionally how the 85s were and compared to the new beginnings and yeah you know you got the vintage look in there and I'm glad they didn't put a vintage look on this because I think eventually when you start wearing this one it'll get to this state so I appreciate Jordan Brand not doing that uh, I already showed you guys the dates in between uh, they're gonna be different and uh, yeah that's that so this is the uh, original Air Jordan 1 and the new beginnings all right, so here it is. This is the New Beginnings pack. This is going to be the uh, Air Jordan 1 New Beginnings and the Airship. So it's slated for February of 2020 at retail price of 350 bucks. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about this pack and if you're gonna be trying to score it. Again, thank you so much to Jordan Brand for gifting the pack. It's an honor to be able to, you know, be a part of the story and, and the history regarding the airship, you know, just in itself. But I think you guys will really appreciate this pack, uh, especially uh, collectors and, uh, you know, new fans alike. But again, uh, if you guys want to follow me, I am on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.